So good morning, Dean. Morning. What are we going to talk about this morning? All right. Uh, we're going to go back to what we were talking about yesterday with the five vowels, the okay. five, the five archetypal vowels. Okay. And I was going to show you how I found how they are um, in the what I call the five stances. Okay. So there are five archetypal stances. Okay. In our, well, let's pay some attention to it today. Exactly. Because um, it goes back to that holistic principle of, of as above, so below. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I found by working with the, my lower centers mm -hmm. that I, and also because I'm, I'm a martial artist myself, I have seen through the martial arts these five vowels, mm -hmm. these five vowel stances that they use, mm -hmm. uh, much like uh, how I've seen um, in Gabriella Roth's work with mm -hmm. the five rhythms, mm -hmm. she's tapping into uh, that that archetype, mm -hmm. and it's you know it's just like uh, the archetype of four. You know, you're going to find those four qualities of earth, water, air, and fire, if it's indeed an archetype, right? Uh, a fourfold archetype, right? Or you know a threefold archetype, mm -hmm. thinking, feeling, and willing, mm -hmm. past, present, future. There's right. there's these similarities. Yeah. Head, arms, and hips. Right. Head, yeah. heart, and hips. Yeah. Uh, just even on that note, just a side note here. Uh, in Waldorf, we say something uh, often. We say head, heart, and hands. Right. And that's a beautiful thing to uh, to share with the parents and and, and the children. Uh, that's what we're the principle we're working with. Uh, Yet, if we're we're really to be honest about uh, a threefold and being, clear about it, clear about it, yeah, and and teach it in in the trainings, we would really have to go, we'd have to be saying head, heart, and hips, and limbs. No hips, just hips. Well, I say hips okay. because uh, for one, it 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 rhymes. <laughs> it's uh, the assonance is there. Head, heart, and hips. Okay. Or the uh, the the alliteration is there. H, yeah. Um, and that, that's, but it does point to uh, the fact that we need to inhabit our hips because that's, our, our, that's where our limbs are attached to our hips. Yes, of course they are. And as our, as our hands are attached to our arms. Yeah. So it makes so sense to, to say head. you have to pay attention. It pay makes attention. sense to say head, heart, and hips. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you got to, so, We'll yeah, go back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, look back and I'll show you. So, um, we have these, Five vowels. Okay. A, A, E, O, and U. And as I mentioned yesterday, they're in this natural progression. Mm -hmm. Is how we pronounce them. Mm -hmm. And I've seen now in the martial arts and in my surfing, and also even when I dig labyrinths. Oh uh, yes, of course. You uh, I, I can utilize these five stances when I when I work with the sand with my feet. Yeah. So. Go ahead and uh, hand back. So, the, you know, the all stance is, is pretty obvious. Right? Yeah, yeah. And in martial arts, we call that the, the, full, the horse stance. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Where you're opened. Yes. Okay. And so, uh, you know, and, and whatever you do, there's this, there's this really sense of groundedness and stability. Yeah. You're open, yet you're also vulnerable in the same sense. In yeah. the sense, the awe is, there's a lot going on with that awe. Mm hmm. The next progression is anytime we, we cross over. Mm hmm. Cross our limbs up. Mm -hmm. what, what what principle is happening here is that we're loading up our limbs. When we cross over, we we, we load up our, our being. We, mm -hmm. we bring us this almost a spiral activity into it. And yes. You see, see now I'm because you could go around that I, way. You know, I, I could spin and jump because I, I've loaded can up you, my limbs. Can can you do that again, please? Yeah, that I, was I, very good. I loaded it up. I, okay. I, and then the whole spine then starts to become uh -huh. this coil. And then you can just wow. you can just do because you can, wow you, you just can go around mm -hmm. and so it, uh, the A is, is is a transition you could say a transition sound or tra it, it, it transits into the next mm -hmm. sound mm -hmm. so that A mm -hmm. it's everywhere right I mean it's uh huh you know, it, when uh, you cross your fingers it is there that A that that you know and the principle behind A is that you're 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 touching yourself yeah come to a greater consciousness. Yeah, when, when we have, you know, we touch ourselves, we can do it to the degree of great pleasure or great pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I found with the, the A, for example, the, the discipline of yoga, mm -hmm. 
if and in yoga, you know, if I, you know, it's you, do you it can a almost few see it times it's, around or, or more. So it's, it's yeah. you can see that that's what's really present in the discipline of yoga is this a quality mm -hmm. of touching yourself. Yeah. And you know, uh, you know, I've done plenty of yoga, and I still do. Um, you, you, you spend an hour or more touching yourself, you, you get pretty blissed out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, they have Shavasana, where you lay down, and Shavasana is a very important principle. It's not, and Rudolf Steiner utilized it in the curative view of me. Because what you're really doing is you're allowing uh, a break in, in a movement sequence so that it can settle. Because mm -hmm. our water, as I said yesterday, our water stratifies. Water wants to make planes. Yeah. And so by, uh, after having a long session, whatever you're doing, it could be yoga, it could be curative eurythmy, because they do it in the end of, a, of, mm -hmm. an, of mm -hmm. an aggressive curative eurythmy session. Mm -hmm. um, you have the child, the child or the person lay down. Lay down. down. So that there's, there's uh, a settling. A settling going on. And there's a, and also there's a there's a, a break in any kind of movement, and it has its own place, and then you can go on to the next thing. Yeah, because that's how it imprints. A thought imprints. Yeah. yeah. And and if you didn't do that, then all those movements you had just made will be mixed in with the other movements, and then there'll be a less chance of it imprinting deeply. Yeah. So imprinting is a very important yeah. part. Yeah. Just another note on imprinting is that. Um, You'll see in curative eurythmy lessons or sessions that that are that that are done, you do it aggressively. You mm -hmm. do it with vigor because mm -hmm. you're you're literally you know you're 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 driving mm -hmm. those those sounds. Mm -hmm. that, hey, I'm pushing hard against my limbs here. Yes. Against my, yes. And if you do it aggressively and vigorously, mm -hmm. you drive those archetypes right down into your bones, mm -hmm. and, you, and and you make a really strong imprint. Yeah. You see, in our culture today, sports is so effective because it's done so vigorously. Because we, I, I, we as human beings, we yearn to be imprinted. Yes. And but you have human experiences in a physical body. In a physical body. So and that's so, where we're going here all together, just to connect, make sure just that make sure we, we never our, ever forget the physical body. Never forget the physical body. We can't go around it. We have to go through it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that, that principle of imprinting is very important. I almost feel like that imprinting is connected with the, with the, with love. Mm -hmm. That love somehow has this connection to imprinting. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I, you know, I've seen in my own life that the, this trauma that I experienced, that, that, that traumatic imprinting, mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like the counter of, of, yeah. of love. Yeah. Um, Anyway, so let's go back to the stances. That was just okay. a side thing on imprinting. Mm -hmm. Something sure. I think, you know. No problem. Important. Uh, well, just to tidy it up, another thought just came to me is that often, you can, you can stay back. Uh, often in our artistic eurythmy, um, there's a sense, even in pedagogical eurythmy, and in some cure spaces, curative eurythmy, it, it stays in that sort of airy, floaty mm -hmm. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it mm -hmm. doesn't really imprint. Mm -hmm. You see, and then, and then for the children too, they're, they're not being challenged in their physical body in the eurythmic lesson, and it, it, ha it, it just has an adverse effect. They really want to be imprinted. Yeah, yeah. And it needs to be done vigorously, right yeah. from kindergarten all the yeah. way to 12th grade. There's well, no which, means, which, means, which means that you really uh, utilize the physical body. Utilize the you, physical body. Yeah. Because there's something about, something also important about the, this etheric world. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, in a sense, it's a bit like a battery. Mm -hmm. You know, you really, uh, it, it's healthy to discharge as much etheric force as you can during the day so that you, when you go to bed at night, you, you just, you're just, you're, you're whipped out. You're yes. Just, you're depleted. That's what they take the dogs for a walk endlessly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that when you, when you do fall asleep, it, it, you, it comes right back. Exactly. You know, you, you're not, you can almost see the principle in, in the technology in some batteries. Uh, if, if you don't discharge the battery all the way, the battery has a memory. Yeah. And if you only discharge it a little bit to there. and you stick it back on the charger, it'll only kind of, it'll only go back to where you, yeah. it, it, it yeah. weakens the battery over time. Yeah. And Depending is, what kind it is, of course. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we're but right. That's a technological totally. example, but it, exactly. it, it, it holds sway. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and that's I, why I think uh, a lot of mothers that have um, children who sit all day and then they come home in the afternoon 
after school and they and you can't keep them still. I mean, they should have really been moving all day instead of... Yeah, sitting in front of the screen. Exactly, or, or in, in a classroom or something. So, right, behind the desk. You know, so yeah. they, they, they sh and then they have to sort of tire them out. Right. Because they don't sleep well at night. So you can really see it with the children. Well, and, and again, out of my experiences with the traumas that I had, um, uh, you know, getting knifed in the middle of the night while I was sleeping, um, I gravitated towards a lot of physical activity uh, during the day, so I could I could just be in, in an exhaustion, fall asleep at night. Yeah, yeah. And not have to worry about someone you know coming yeah, in the night stabbing me again. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's where I found uh, that surfing was incredibly healing for me. Being out in the ocean, uh, being in this raw etheric environment. Mm -hmm. It uh, anyone who's been you know swims or has been out in a pool, mm -hmm. pool or in the ocean, they know that after they get out, they're they're really. Uh, exhausted in a really good way and yeah in a good way and then you can sleep like a baby like a baby yeah yeah so that's been a helpful therapy for me mm -hmm. you know um surfing yeah that's that's therapy for yeah. ptsd yeah yeah um so we have when we so, go back we had the mm -hmm. off stance uh -huh. you know, that is in, in martial arts it's a horse stance mm -hmm. we have the a stance which is a, a, you when you, when you cross trans, cross over your midline mm-hmm and okay. it loads up your limbs. Mm -hmm. You have the potential of being able to turn any time. Turn and, and spin, and, and you, you load up your spine and your limbs. Mm -hmm. The next one is the E sound. Mm -hmm. So you know, generally, uh, you know, the awe is done so in the arms and the A crossover mm -hmm. in some mm -hmm. way, or you, mm -hmm. or you, or you t touch yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, the E is is the sound of, of the stretching, mm -hmm. the stretching movement. Mm -hmm. Um, every time you reach, so when a child is in class and they mm -hmm. raise their hand. Yes, and people love to do that. Yeah, and, and, and Rudolf Steiner talks about the quality of the E as egotism. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in, a, in a both positive and negative sense. Mm -hmm. you know, that the yeah, child can wants be to be recognized. E, yes. me, me, yes. me, yes. I, yes. I, I. Yeah. I, I have the answer. Pick yeah. me, pick yeah. me. Yeah. Uh, it's a really important concept because that's happening uh, you know, if I have to reach across the table for something, yes, I'm reaching. Yes, and the, the archetype of E is there. Mm -hmm. So you can start to see, then uh, you know, if you start breaking down different disciplines uh, and seeing what sounds are more operative than others. And you can do that with the legs. Yeah. So and so in the E, the E stance is is basically uh, in, in martial arts it's it's your fighting stance it's your fighting kamai you're mm -hmm. you're you got forward and back mm -hmm. and you're you're standing over your center and you're you move right and left but it's that it's that and it's in, in surfing also yeah but what's interesting about um you know martial arts is, is ancient mm -hmm. it goes probably well i understand back into ancient india mm -hmm. and uh the rishis went to the shaolin the 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 uh, in, ancient Indian rishis uh, apparently uh, uh, went to the Shaolin Temple and started the whole martial movement mm -hmm. in China. Mm -hmm. Well, I suppose they, to a certain degree, they realized that they have to get into the physical body. Right. Because I think at that time they weren't quite so incarnated anyway. Could yeah, exactly. Because there's an evolutionary thing happening. Exactly. So, uh, so the E stance is you know in martial arts, you know, you can kick. Yeah. You know. And, and, and so the E stance in martial arts was, was created for self-defense and for self-preservation. Of course. So that's an important concept in, in dealing with your environment or even, you know, I guess, you know, beating each other up or fighting for resources. Well, the stabbing is certainly an E stance. Yeah. <laughs> it, it kind of stretch, you know, again, so, but it, and so for what I've seen in martial arts, you know, the E is in, in, the, in that stance. You know, and then when you come out and you, you actually hit, you're, you're, you're coming into this continental sound. Yeah. You just cut. Yeah. 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 Now, what's interesting I found is that the kahunas, the ancient Polynesians, mm -hmm. the kahuna magic, so to speak, mm -hmm. the kahuna discipline, uh, gave birth to surfing. Uh huh. And so surfing utilizes the same stance. Mm hmm. This, this mm -hmm. E stance. Mm hmm. Yeah. And what's different about what the kahunas brought is that this stance is used for recreation. Uh-huh. It's not used for self-preservation. No, no. It's for enjoyment. Yeah. 
And that's a really important concept, yeah. recreation. Yeah. And yeah. so we used that stance in, in, um, in surfing. That was where it originally was used on riding on these large planks of wood, mm -hmm. big wood. Um, but now it's happened, you see now in our culture, that this E stance has gone, it's gone exponential. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it started with surfing, and then uh, young people in Southern California wanted to be able to still surf when the waves weren't happening. Put wheels on so there. They put wheel, they took, ah. they took, exactly, they took steel wheels and they put it on, on a piece of wood. Mm -hmm. And then the whole technology started because they, saw, they found that they're, they're utilizing that E stance was, uh, you, could, you could do it when there was no waves. And then they went to snowboarding. Yeah. They went to wakeboarding. Yeah. Okay, I so, mean, from two skis to one ski. I mean, an amazing thing. Yeah, well, skiing is, is, is another you know? stance. It's an U stance. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but they wanted to go to the E stance They instead. wanted to go to the E stance. Because it's really clear for our time, the E stance is, is, is movement medicine. Yeah, you know, yeah, I uh, can see that. Yeah, and so we can, you can start to even diagnose yourself and seeing that, you know, what kind of stance is more prevalent in my life and, and what stances can I engage in more or less, depending on how I want to self-diagnose. But culturally, though, this E stance is really important because it's, um, it's bringing people towards their center. Yeah. Because the E is all about this, this uh, you know, and you see it then in also Rudolf Steiner's statue mm -hmm. uh, that he carved at, and still over in Dornach and mm -hmm. Gertiano. Mm -hmm. um, He's in this E stance, and he's he's like uh, that. he's holding back these these forces, these yes. forces of extremes, yeah. the forces of, of spirituality and the forces of materialism. Yeah, what he calls the Lucifer principle and the Harmonic principle. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And and so he creates, and he has this what he, this Christ-like this being, what he calls a representative of man. He doesn't do the he doesn't use the C word. He he, and so that and that person is there to find the, the golden mean, so to speak, in life. In other words, to, to find the balance the between the powers. Powers, right. Yeah. Right. Of and which, you know, ends up being moderation. Mm -hmm. Moderation is... Well, and consciousness, too. Moderation and consciousness, yeah. So, um, and now, uh, me, myself, as a surfer, uh, I'm seeing how uh, the East Dance has gone into snowboarding and wakeboarding. And what's happening is that that those arts, those new new arts, are um, are coming back and reinforming the surfer. Because mm -hmm. what what's what's happening is that in snowboarding, um, your feet are strapped into the board. Yes. So you have you. So what happens in snowboarding, or uh, is that you have to be fluent on both sides. Yeah. You have to be fluent as a regular foot. Yeah. So if I'm going this direction, this is my back foot, my, mm -hmm. my control foot, mm -hmm. you could say. Mm -hmm. and, and then a snowboard, it's, it slides around because you're on this the surface. Yeah, because you, have, you can use either part as the front. Yeah, or the back. But what, it, what, it, what it's really saying is that you have to be fluent on both sides of your body. Yeah. You have to become switch foot. Yeah. Is the terminology. Yeah. Uh-huh. So what I found is that when I go surfing, I, I'm making sure that every wave I catch, I try to switch. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is that, so there is, a, there is this awe stance, you see, that is sort of natural in this direction. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I turn, you see, the E stance comes in. Yeah. There, there's this up, there's a stretching. In this. Yeah. And, and then when I wanted to switch, you see, I, I have to go into this. What I do is I, I, I'm creating it like an A. Uh -huh. and, I, and I'm making transition and I go right into, into the next the, stance. Yeah. But what's important about here is I'm going through my center. Yeah. I'm not hopping and mm -hmm. going around my center. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm actually...